All right. Well, thank you very much, folks, for joining. My name is Pat Gage, and I'm the host of the Commercial Real Estate Investing Mastermind. We have these uh, bi-weekly on Wednesdays uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern. And um, for a schedule of uh, upcoming uh, events, as well as guests coming up, go to opportunitycreator.com forward slash Zoom Mastermind, and you'll have everybody on there. The mission of this group, uh, as we established it over a year ago, uh, is to give you the confidence to do your first deal, uh, bring in experts and mastermind and ask questions and kind of give you that knowledge. So in this group, there's going to be people with money. There's going to be people who are sponsors. There are going to be people who uh, are aspire, who have properties. Uh, you know, So I encourage you with that to use the chat. Uh, and put your information, your contact information into the chat. And at the end of the call, I'll show you how to download the chat uh, to your personal computer so you can have everybody's contact information so you don't have to waste time scribbling because I want you to listen to Tate. He's going to inspire us with a, a lot of gold nuggets. So at the end, I'll show you how to do that. But go ahead and put your information in the chat. Uh, and then we'll uh, let uh, Tate uh, talk here. There will be time for questions afterwards. Uh, once we get done ch chatting here. Uh, so uh, we will have questions and answers uh, roughly around quarter tell. Uh, I'd like to kind of give it 15, 20 minutes of, of uh, answers and questions. Um, but everybody is muted on purpose. Uh, once we start the question and answers uh, process, I'll have you raise your hand. Um, and this is due to the uh, uh, recent Zoom blogger that has uh, entered our mix. <laughs> so hopefully with the, with the uh, passwords and stuff like that of uh, hopefully keeping people like that out because again here we're here to learn we're here to uh, you know experience what's going on and get some real good knowledge so with that being said I want to introduce my guest tonight is Tate Seamer and my screen he's upper left corner here um, and he's a visionary behind Greenlight, uh, Greenlight Equity uh, Group as you can see there in his uh, background uh, Tate's passion is improving adding, adding value to high density multifamily development and existing apartment buildings in such a way that maximizes the value of the communities. And I love that. I, I love your, your mission. Uh, people say, oh, I'm a value add, but I love how you actually went down to that next level and kind of really, what am I talking about? And I think that's awesome. And then, you, you know, consistent returns to investors and the well-being of the residents. And, and, and I think that's another cool caveat that a lot of people don't put in there in fact i may mm -hmm. steal that and put that on ours but i think that's yeah. i think that's awesome that you're looking at it from not only yes we're going to make money on this but okay we our customers are the are the residents right that i mean that's you know we don't treat them right guess what we don't have an investment so i think that's Absolutely. awesome yep. um your roots extend back 15 years in real estate which is awesome when you bought your first multifamily property, 110-year-old duplex in South Saint, uh, Salt Lake City, uh, he's been since then he's been a uh, principal in over 40 transactions and an agent in another uh, 45 investment transactions. So you've got a, a few deals under your de uh, belt, I would say. So <laughs> yeah, a few deals. I, I would say this though: the most most of those are multi or mo I'm sorry, most of those were single family. Uh, a lot of them were flips. Actually, the majority of them were flips. Uh, we, we've we done, I'll get into this a little more, but we've done some land entitlement deals. We've done some ground up development deals and now uh, multifamily. And we have a singular focus on large unit count asset class, commercial multifamily. So um, we're kind of done with everything else in the space at this point. Well, that's good. Though, but a lot, a lot of people on this call and a lot of people in this business, they do start in some way to get get going in, in residential because obviously it's it's easier, it's a little quicker, and that's really the first entry point. So, you know, that's some great experience. Um, he also Tate, I'd like to also really uh, thing is uh, host a the Apartment Guys podcast and if you need to go to apple tonight and download it after he's done talking don't do it when he's talking mm -hmm. uh because he it's it's i found tate through that uh, i've been listening to his podcast for oh uh, god probably a year uh at least and just gathering a whole bunch of information and he serves on the executive board of the utah real estate investors association he enjoys helping fellow investors and entrepreneurs through mentoring and coaching uh 
takes other passions, which is cool, including big mountain skiing and mountain biking, music, hiking, and with and with his dog Joey. That's awesome. What kind of dog mm-hmm. is Joey? Joey's a little mud. He's a he's a chocolate lab dachshund mix. If you can imagine that combination. Wow. That's that's, that's a mix. <laughs> he's a funny he's a funny dude. He's a funny that's looking cool. dude. Well, that sounds like you, you've uh, got a pretty cool pal there. Well, yeah, listen, I'm I lucky. will turn it over to you and then we'll, we'll just kind of just take it from there. And we'll, uh, like sure. I said earlier, we'll just, we'll go with the flow and then we'll open it up to questions later and we'll go yep. from there. Great. I, I love it. So, well, Pat, first of all, thank you a ton for, first of all, listening to the podcast to begin with and, and for uh, thinking enough of me and, and what I, you know, brought to the podcast, I guess, to, to, to bring thank some you for value to your group. I really appreciate. Um, and I, my intention tonight is to, is to give everybody here as everything I know, like I'm, I'm an open book, um, whatever it is, you know, I, we just closed on 300 door, over 300 doors, uh, in the last, um, six months. And we've got another, uh, 300 under contract with about 400 in the works uh, under LOI negotiation right now. So, well, now we isn't it a tough market on, though? This is a tough market. So how how can yeah? Well, what's going market. on here? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we've we've just spent the last two and a half years building relationships in two very specific markets and getting to know them very very well, and not spending any time or energy on anything else. So wow, oh, okay, we've got we've got two, we've got broker relation. We've got one broker relationship in Oklahoma city. That's literally bringing us every, every deal we've done in Oklahoma is Oklahoma city so far, uh, except for one, which was brought to us by the seller themselves. Uh, but we've, we've basically gotten these off market deals through this broker in Oklahoma city that, um, we just networked with, right. And, and found through actually cold calling and, uh, have built a relationship with, and they're now, they also have a property management arm in Oklahoma city. And so we work with them intimately on operations and acquisitions. Um, and then in Columbus, same thing, we're getting, um, some off market opportunities through just brokers that we've one, one of which we closed deals with earlier in the year. Um, you know, that there's such a thing that you hear, you hear about the law of the first deal a lot. Mm -hmm. Michael Blanc talks about it and other people bring it up. It's a thing like that is a real thing, guys. Like once you get that first deal done things, it's like, it's almost like the universe kind of rolls out the red carpet for you. You just, things start to happen. People bring you deals instead of you going after deals, people are bringing you capital or, or know of somebody that has capital or whatever, or want a GP with you or co GP with you or be a capital raiser on your deal. Like, those things start to happen after you close that first deal and um, getting that first deal done is feels and uh, is for everybody a mammoth gargantuan task. It's, it's not easy. And, and, and uh, you know, and when I say the first deal, I'm talking about your first larger scale deal, like getting a, we did a 12 unit, right. That wasn't that terribly difficult to get done as far as the financing and everything else. Um, that was our first apartment deal was okay. flipping a flipping a 12 unit deal um here in in Salt Lake City but um you know when you get into the when you when you get committed to doing 80 plus units let's say uh which is what we're really interested in we're really interested in like twice that and up but um when so you, you started committed- 80 units and go up is basically that you kind of changed shifted from the 12 unit now yeah. you're looking at 80 oh, yeah. units to what couple hundred is that is for, uh, we, we're, we literally are we're we've sent two lois in in the last uh three days on a community that's just under 400 units in oklahoma city wow wow okay so wow. you know 26 million dollar asset or that's at least that's the price where we where we are mm-hmm. um that's you know what we've offered and that's what we're thinking and hoping that we'll be able to get it under contract for um, so we've gotten decent at raising capital pretty quickly. I was just going to ask you about that because going after yeah. 400 unit, you got to have some capital and some investors yeah. that trust you. Cause so obviously yeah. you've built up those relationships with investors to do that. 
and continuing to and building relationships with with specifically with capital raisers and co GP type folks. Um, because if you can find somebody on a, you know, an $11 million raise, if you can find somebody that'll, you know, an institutional source that'll bring 80, 90% of that stack, that's, uh, yeah, that's, or that's, oh, yeah, it takes that a lot of weight off. Time. Yeah, yeah. That takes and, a lot of weight off. You can focus on fine tuning the deal, right. Getting it across right. the finish line instead of, you know, Oh my God, we don't know if we have the last hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Well, right. that's great. Well, congratulations. I I knew you had that uh, the, the first one you talked about. I had no idea that you had that much in your pipeline. Three hundred doors closing and another four hundred. Uh, wow, yep. goodness yep, yep. gracious! I'm honored for you to be here. <laughs> well, I know. My <laughs> goodness, that. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, honestly, but here here's the thing, Pat. It, literally, a, a, exactly one year ago, I had zero units under ownership. We wow. bought. We bought, in fact, I'll take it back. I had $6 million townhomes under ownership that I had built myself that I was hugely underwater in. Let's, so it was okay. worse than zero, right? Uh, and I can talk about those as much as you guys want to hear about them, but it's, it's kind of a tragic story, to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure we've all and, uh, been there. But what, what, was, what was the new key list? Let's, let's get down to you know, you pivoted some way. What did you do that you went from, okay, I'm paying on this house. And I've been there too. I, I floated yeah. a house in Texas for five years, you know, yeah. and, and just losing my shorts. Every What do you think was that one decision that said, okay, a year ago, you probably never even thought you'd even have 300 units, right? I mean, I'm sure you did, but how do you go from where you were to where you are today? Yeah, the whole thing started about two and a half years ago, and uh, when we got really serious about large unit count assets, and I did a coaching mastermind program with Corey Peterson in Phoenix. Okay. Yep. I was in I know that Corey, for about yep. a year. Um, fantastic program, and I learned the ins and the outs of how to do this business, uh, how to raise capital, how how to find deals, how to negotiate deals, and do due diligence, and really. Yeah, Corey's great at education and and walking you through the whole thing from the perspective of somebody that's done it, um, and he makes it a lot of fun too. So he's just a terrific guy, um, and so got you know learned a ton from him, and we started making offers on on assets. We got into a uh, uh, into a uh, forty four unit deal in Albuquerque that. We didn't close because it uh, actually ran up. Our financing financing deadline ran up right against COVID as it as things split oh, um, wide okay. open with COVID, and our financing kind of got uncertain, and we had to drop out of that deal. But uh, and we had thirty thousand and you know non refundable due diligence costs and that deal and everything else. Oh but, man. Um, we were writing LOIs on 156 units in, in San Antonio. Um, we were, we were shopping at about five different markets and, uh, and really just kind of getting, you know, trying to get that first deal done. Right. And again, when you haven't done it, uh, as a group, you know, and ideally you're working with other, with other people. Cause this is very, very much a team sport. And I can talk more about that. I'm happy to, but, um, you know, as a group, if you haven't, you know, green light as a group had not done a deal. So when we were out writing LOIs, um, we were doing things to build our credibility. And one of the smartest things we did, we actually, when I said, you know, if we had talked a year ago, I didn't own anything. Well, about this time a year ago, we closed on our 20 unit property in, in here in Utah okay. that we still own. And we've totally repositioned and essentially doubled rents, like put a half million dollars into it and doubled the rents. Um, and uh, the smartest thing we ever did was we picked one of the biggest, baddest apartment investors in Salt Lake City that I know and like a lot. Um, and we asked him to be part of our team for nothing. Basically we said, okay, you know, we, we, we'd love you to be 5% of this deal to just kind of answer questions for us and, and keep your eyes on it and help us out. And 
turns out we needed, of course, a little more capital to get the deal closed. So he brought that and his in his position grew inside of the partnership. And so he's now he owns more than that. Um, so but, what, when you said how many units did he own at that time, you said the biggest, baddest. So obviously, yeah, he, so he, he owned from units. Yeah, his portfolio is about 95 million in, in wow. assets. Uh, and he's he owns about 35 percent of that. Um, wow, or, okay. as far as, as far as just raw equity, uh, or, you know, net worth essentially. So he is now a partner with us on every deal that we do, um, almost, uh, as we are growing and building our own resume, um, we'll, we'll do some smaller deals on our own just to kind of keep that going. But, but, and he's fine with that. Like, he's like, Hey, if, you know, if you guys need me, great, let's do this. Let's rock and roll. If not, no worries. And, but he's, he's about, he, he wants to buy everything. And, and so, um, and it's wonderful to have him on our team. Um, so it sounds like his mission or his vision was matched up closely to your team's vision, right? He wants to buy everything. And I'm sure, you know, you guys have a similar goal and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but so it sounds like you guys were both kind of Kill, but he, because he really benefits more. Right? Well, he, you do too, but he benefits really kind of more. Is you guys are over here doing this stuff, and he, he can go do his stuff. He's getting a little percentage. Right. Okay, right. I mean, you're both he's, growing. He's, he's a signer on the loan, right? He, he's, he's a sponsor on the loan. Uh, we, we use his net worth and his liquidity and his resume to qualify for loans. We can qualify for up to about thirty million dollars uh, wow, because okay. of his net worth. And by the way, this guy's 43 years old. He's been doing it since he was 16. He's five no years younger. No way. Five years <laughs> younger than me. So um, he's, wow. he's, and so one thing that's different though, is he, his, um, his whole port, his whole portfolio and focus has been in Utah. He's got okay. like a strip mall in Dayton, Ohio and a couple other things, but his, 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 the lot the, the huge proportion of his, uh, growth and wealth building and everything else happened in downtown Salt Lake City. So him going outside of, of Utah with us is something that's new for him, right? And he probably wouldn't have done that had we not really been busting our butts to, to do mm-hmm. this, to do these markets well and to bring good deals to the table. And, 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 and you know, and, and we've been able to do that. So um, so did you have to do much convincing or was it your actions that he saw? Cause obviously, yes, it sounds like you're very focused and that's kind of what I'm getting here is one, you're very focused on the markets and two, your network. Did you have to convince him to say, Hey, we're going to this Columbus market or Cincinnati market, or was it, you, you really kind of focused him on the Utah market and he kind of saw what you guys are doing over here. Right. Yeah. No, I think this industry is like so many right now and in the entrepreneurial world is really a value first industry. And so like you, Pat are creating a lot of value for people that are on this call, people that have been on your other calls and other ways that you are able to touch people, right? Like you're creating value for them and whether or not this is part of why you do it, the reality is that that comes back to you in, in certain ways, right? Like it just pays off to can be a contribution to other people. And so for us with, with our partner, uh, we, we led first with, Hey, here's a chunk of a deal. It wasn't a huge chunk and it wasn't a huge deal, but it was enough. Uh, it's six figures he's going to make, you know, for, for signing on a loan and, and, uh, investing a couple hundred grand and um, and basically being an, an advisor. Uh, so by working with us th- in that deal and getting to know us intimately through that deal, uh, I think we earned his trust and you know his he, he's he's just he's been an unbelievably great partner on the deals that we've done since then. Um, he was involved in our 70 unit that we bought in Columbus in March. And then he's uh, also the sponsor on our, our 179 units in Mansfield, Ohio. Uh, okay. And so he's a partner in those and then partner on deals that we've got moving forward here too. So um, 
we're a tight little group. It's, it's myself. It's, um, my longtime partner, Carl York and, uh, Tim is our, is our, uh, that, that guy. And then Chelsea Garber is <laughs> that, guy. Uh, that guy, right? <laughs> um, it's always going to have a, that guy. You that guy. Have a guy. He's, uh, yeah. I mean, seriously, if, if everybody has a, that guy, you're in good shape. Oh yeah. Um, That's what I'm thinking too. Cause I mean, from what you're saying, and I don't mean to interrupt your story, but yeah, that solves a lot of the issues, right? I mean, sure. A lot of people on these calls and all these, you know, meetups, that's the biggest thing. Oh my God. Who's, you know, yeah, this is great. I can run the numbers. Oh, how do we, how do we pull this off? Right. How, how do mm-hmm. I know that, the, you know, like, cause you can run spreadsheets until you're blue in the face. You can make those things change. It's Excel, right? We, we have all done that where we, but you need, no, need that voice of reason to say, wait a minute. I just did a deal and let's do it this way, this way, this way. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's, you have that guy to guide you. Right. 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 And we've even like gone and as bad as, as badly as we did with our new build townhomes. And we did, we lost a, a ton of money on trying to be developers when we okay. had no business. And, uh, <laughs> and, that was going on for the better part of three years, by the way, while we were ramping up into multifamily. So we had a pretty heavy weight around our head or necks as far as uh, needing to do a, a deal, a draining yeah. process. And had we not put this, this 20 unit in play and we're going to make the better part of 2 million off the, off, off of that 20 unit deal. Wow. Uh, and, and we'll probably have it sold within the next, six months because we need to stabilize it still um but it's pretty close to stabilized anyway had we not done that deal like we uh, you know this would be a completely different interview and i probably wouldn't be here um and it, it so it kind of saved the day and the the big takeaway and this is a conversation that can go pretty deep but the mindset piece when you are when when the shit's hitting the fan and you're losing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a day, right? Uh-huh. Like sometimes hundreds of dollars an hour. And, and it's a, and it's like a long-term train wreck because you're in it and you, it's not going anywhere. So you finish it and sell it like that, that kind of weight could, you know, six years ago, seven years ago, had I not had the mindset chops that I've developed over the last five years, like, it, it would have sunk us. There's no way we would have survived you. Yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and we, you know, again, it, it hurt. It hurt badly. It was a punch in the gut. And we have, luckily, the debt that we incurred from those projects is confined to a, some credit lines that we have. So it's not super messy as far as that goes with other investors. But it's it's something that we're you know, we'll have resolved as soon as we liquidate on the 20 unit, but it, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's been quite a, uh, a, a path and the last Endeavor. four years have been intense as intense as it gets. Um, so <laughs> I, I can imagine uh, I've been there, like I said before, I obviously don't know your situation, but I've been there too. And I find that that pain is a, a great motivator. Uh, and, and sometimes if you were in so deep the creativity does get stifled because that's all you're thinking yep. about right you got to step above that and go okay i'm gonna make it through this right yep. I'm, I'm gonna get and that's really what you had it sounds like you did because obviously you're doing other things so that's awesome yeah and i gotta say like the element of faith was huge in that process and and i don't necessarily mean anything religious by that i'm just talking about having faith that things ultimately will work out all right and sticking to that conviction you know like staying in that truth that you that you're declaring that this is going to work out i don't know how this sucks right now and you you embrace the suck right you have to you you have to embrace the suck when you're in it and uh and you have to work your way through it and just take one step at you know take that first step and then take the next step and then take the next step but do so with with unwavering faith as hal elrod talks about um yeah. if you're you know if you're if your effort is is high and you, you know you are bringing it every day and you've got unwavering faith like eventually things are going to work things are going to go well for you you'll you will find it, you know, in our case, we found the end of the tunnel. We got, we got those things off our books. 
and you know our bandwidth is now 100 percent available huge to, yeah to what, to what we're doing and what we're focused on so so how how did you you know you obviously the desperation this how did you go from okay we can't be developers how did you right. pivot and not just say, okay, I'm just going to go get a W-2. I mean, this is just way too hard. How did yeah. you, because most people would be like, oh, screw this. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go back to my job and I'm done. Yeah. You pivoted from development and said, okay, wow, that hurt. Wow. That, that's my brows bleeding. And then you went and bought multifamily, a 20 unit. Mm -hmm. w mm. What was going through? I mean, I don't want to say, hey, what was going through your mind, but <laughs> yeah, obviously yeah. something pivoted you to, to do that. You know, so um, I don't know if anybody on the call is familiar with a guy named Adam Adams, but he is uh, yep. Adam Triple A Adams is a is a fantastic human being, and um, he came to Salt Lake City and gave a presentation at one of our investor association meetings that I'm on the board of. Okay, and the presentation was on the five ways to get into multifamily investing or the five ways, the five ways to get into apartment investing, I think more specifically. And he was the first one that really helped me get my head around that I could do it. And this was early on in the townhouse, the, the townhouse process. So like we were still, we were starting to build these things and they weren't necessarily going horribly right out of the gate. And I, we started like just kind of shifting our mindset into like maybe this apartment thing. And then we had the 12 unit come along. Okay. So we actually did the deal and did a multifamily deal. And when you sit down with an actual live deal and underwrite it, and it's a, it, it's a, it's a deal that pencils well and cash flows and everything else like profits well and returns your investors well, everything else. When you see that live for the first time in person, like it's striking. It's like, yeah. holy crap. This this thing cash flows right out of the gate. Like we're never gonna not we're never gonna have to scramble for a mortgage payment. It pays for its it, it pays for all of its expenses. Like somebody shoot a hole in this deal. There's no risk. <laughs> yeah. Show me where the risk is. Exactly. <laughs> what sell you know, did like, not calculate right? Yeah, exactly. And it's and it's you know it, yeah it's investing and it there there is always inherent risk. But show me where show me the the real true like risky Downside. aspect. Yeah. Of, of buying something that has a positive cash flow out of the gate, especially when you've got value add component and opportunity um, available to you. you. Right there, you're creating cash flow and you're forcing appreciation, which creates wealth. You're creating equity. And there's nothing else out there that does it like that. And, you know, like it, whatever, if in my opinion, like, this at very least deserves everybody on this calls like undivided attention for uh, at least a, a, a very good um, look at why it's so good, right? You've got you've got ongoing cash flow. You're building res you know passive income, residual income, however you want to look at it. You've got the forced appreciation, your equity growth. You've got the IRS loves multifamily commercial real estate in general. So you've got depreciation that is crazy and allows you to essentially pay no taxes on a lot of your income if you do it right. You've got uh, risk mitigation and especially when you're buying class B minus to and, and lower type assets because mm -hmm. in a recession, those assets always perform well. And so, you know, should interest rates go up and should the should the stock market crash and should the economy start to soften, uh, the, our assets are going to do nothing but do better and better. And rents will at, at the very least, rents will stay the same, if not go up a little bit, because there'll be uh, increased pressure on those assets. Um, as, as many apartments as are being built in some markets right now you cannot build affordable class C housing anymore for just it's that's what, I, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. By just by the cost of building lumber, lumber just went, you know, tripled Sky or quadrupled. High. And, yep. and, and it's come down, but the cost to build is still prohibitive. If you've got a piece of land that you can put a, apartments on or a multifamily development, it's gotta be, you gotta maximize it and you, you've got to build the highest and best use for that piece. Right. 
and building something that's a class C apartment building is not highest and best use for uh, for a, a new development. So the point I'm making is that the, this is a finite asset class, right? Like there's only so many class C, class C plus, class B minus type assets, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's they're in high high demand um, all the time. People need to need places to live, and so. Um, you know, these we're buying places that rent for five to seven hundred bucks for one bedrooms and seven to nine hundred bucks for two bedrooms. And so those are always going to be um, in demand, place, in demand. Yeah. Right. So uh, you manage them well, you you treat your residents the way they deserve to be treated and the way the community you build a community and you make people feel at home and and make them want to stay like that's a huge win. So um, that's really what we're up to. That is awesome. Give me one, one thing that if, if I'm starting today, let's say anybody on this, on this call, what one thing should I do and take away from what you just said to start tomorrow morning mm-hmm. different? Yeah. Great question. Well, I would, I would like, it kind of depends on where you are in your business, right? So I would identify what it is that you need to get you to, to level up. Like, is it a deal? Is it capital? Is it both? Is it a partner? Is it a mentor? Is it a, uh, a mentorship educational program, right? Do you need more specialized knowledge before you could feel like confident speaking the language with brokers? Um, stuff like that. It, so I, I don't mean to cop out and, I, and I'll give oh, you no, some, no. I'll give you some other good ideas. <laughs> I'll give you some, I'll give you some other good ideas here. Uh, I think hopefully, but, um, but so it really depends on what, what your pain point is, right? Like where, w- what it is that you need to move the needle next. Um, and I would say this, I, I would say we built our company on a deal first um, model basically um, and I'm not saying that's the right way to do things. In fact, there is a lot of people that would say it's not the right way to do things. Um, but we've, we went out and got good at finding deals, underwriting deals, doing due diligence. And we, the capital raising came second in, the, in what we got decent at doing. Um, and we're still getting better and better at capital raising. So the reason I like the deal first approach for me personally is I just, I just, it's easier for me to talk to investors when there's something concrete to talk about. And it's easier to move the needle and to move them more towards the taking action when there's something to take action on. So raising, you know, a lot of people say, start raising capital now. And I think that's, I think you should, I think everybody in your life should know what you're doing. Like, Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that's something to ask yourself. Like, think about all the people that you think, you know, think about what number that might be and double it. And that's probably the people, that's probably the amount of people that you really know. And all of those people, every one of them should know what you do and what you do. This is your elevator pitch from now on. If you're going to do this is you raise capital. Okay. That's your job. You raise capital to acquire multifamily assets to pay back investors better than average returns. That's wild. That's like That's elevator good. pitch right there. So, and you can tweak that and adopt it, but I would put raising capital in there at some point um, because you want to let people know that you have an opportunity and that it's, an, it's a super exciting opportunity that doubles returns that the stock market offers typically at least, and is a heck of a lot less volatile than the stock market. And uh, you you have a lot more control over what you're investing in. So, you know, this, I consider it my moral imperative duty to let people know about this opportunity in in multifamily uh, because it is so fantastic and so few people really know about it. So, um, so let, yeah, just letting people know what you do. I mean, you can kind of figure out how to do that, but putting together an email, like starting an email list and, and starting a CRM, what, what, even if that's in a spreadsheet on Google sheets, um, 
yeah, that email, uh, ultimately that email list that you have and that you build is gold. Like marketing to your email list is always going to be way more powerful Evidence, than any yeah. other digital outreach, social media, anything else. It's way more powerful and direct. So, um, so build your CRM, let people know what you're up to. Again, I'm getting requests to, if you can repeat that elevator speech again, I've gotten a bunch of guys say, can they yeah. get your pencils yeah, I just, running, I just, everybody? I say, so, I say, this is what I say. I say, I raise capital to buy cash flowing commercial multifamily assets, or sometimes I'll just say apartments. So cash flowing apartments that allow me to pay my investors better than average returns. Something along those lines. I like that better than average returns. I love that. Or, or you could use solid returns. Like, you know, you don't want to like start th obviously throwing numbers out and yeah. in, a, in a 30 second elevator pitch and you, and, and you don't want to, um, you, it, you don't want to overstate what, you know, the opportunity, right? Cause it's, it's an investment and it's complex. And, and so, you know, the minute you start to sound pitchy, it, it turns it, people turn off. off. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, like letting people know that, that you're putting together, you know, you've got lots of investors that are investing with you and you're putting together great deals and um, putting people in really great positions with their money to make a ton of money. So, we, you know, our deals, sometimes one of, one of the deals we just are, are we're working on right now is like a 2.13 X equity multiplier. So in five years, you know, if you, if you invest a half million dollars, you're going to make like 550 in profit. Um, that's pretty dang good. Like, and, and again, like if the person you're talking to doesn't want to know about it, someone they know very well, would like might, to know about it. That's would true like to know about it. So another thing I would recommend doing guys is, um, I don't have one within arm's length of me, but I've got a little credibility kit that uh, it, it's a, it's a basically a pamphlet that I have printed and it's six pages and it talks about green light equity group, our philosophy, uh, what we do, why we do it, how we do it. Um, and then it talks about each team member. It talks about um, how we structure deals and uh, talks about um, our portfolio a little bit. Which reminds me, I need to update that. And, uh, and it's, it's a game changer, like having that both printed and digital um, to, to get to a broker or an investor or um, anybody that, you know, a friend that says they can help you or knows somebody or whatever, having something to hand them um, that says, you know, why invest with Greenlight or why partner with Greenlight on, a, on an apartment deal? And then it walks through the returns and everything else. Like, that's powerful. That changes, shifts conversations really, really fast and moves the needle. So, you know, pay somebody on Upwork or Fiverr um, a few hundred bucks to design a credibility kit for you. Um, you could call it a press kit or, you know, a, a promo kit right? Um, something like that. And, um, you know, tell your story in it, like make it exciting. And, and if, again, if you don't have a whole lot to put in something like that, find someone that does and make them part of your team and make them part of your credibility kit. Corey Peterson was on my credibility kit for a long time as an advisor, basically. So that just builds my Credibility. credibility yeah definitely with, with who's ever looking at that so um and people are willing to do that you know i i i'm i'm, I'm an advisor on somebody's credibility kit um and happy to be so so you know yeah that, that is some good nuggets my gosh i mm -hmm. love the one these people you know and then double it that's awesome Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's great! Okay, I came what up I'm gonna that one just now, by the way. That's good. That's before. well. That's good. That's impromptu. I think it's true. I mean, I I I know that I limit myself in terms of who I think I know, and really, I probably probably triple it, right? Like, yeah, I, you know, and social media like blows up our numbers, but there's uh, at the same time there's like that that spider web effect of you know you that six degrees of separation, right? Yep. I mean, you six you, you yep. have 
you have billions and billions and billions of dollars in that six degrees of separation in your in your network. You just do. There's there's no way you don't. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm going to do something right now. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to open up the lines and we're going to continue to talk. If you have a question, obviously, I'm going to keep my pulse on the mute in case our, our little friend is there. Um, but uh, let me do that real quick. So if you have a question, uh, let me see here. All righty. Let me see here. Do I have to do that? Oh, can I do? Oh. I don't have to. Uh, I, I apologize. I'm doing it one by one. Go ahead and continue. I apologize. Sure. Yeah. I've asked everybody to unmute. So if you do have a question, ask, but we'll continue talking. Um, so if you want to ask a question and you're not unmuted yet, just... Uh, just give me a, a thumbs up there and we'll get you. All sure. righty. And then I'll keep my finger on the pulse here. All right. No Zoom bombers. Oh, my gosh. You, two, time, two weeks in a row was crazy. I, man, it was – I mean, the effort they put into doing that, we all talked from, like, the effort to do that and get nothing out of it. <laughs> what's the point? You know, you're like, yeah, yeah. it was just disrupt as, disruptive as heck. Um I've got a question for you. As far as when you talk about the residents, yeah. how do you, when you go into these communities, how are you, you know, incentivizing these tenants? How are you doing stuff a little bit differently to make that tenant feel a little different than the last owner? Yeah. So, you know, it, it really isn't too hard in class C, honestly, it's, it's to, to, to differentiate yourself from the slum lords that we're buying these places from um you just do things right you you provide uh, you know high quality housing that you know you, everything works the doors are secure the exterior doors to common areas are secure they're they're well lit um they're well residents are well communicated with they feel like they've got um a, a good path to getting things fixed, for instance, if they need something fixed or um, just something needs addressed there. You know, so honestly, like the importance of the, your, your selection of a property manager cannot be overstated. That is a absolute make it or break it on these deals. And a bad property manager will run a property into the ground. And that's often where we're finding these deals that they've just been poorly managed. Okay. Um, but a, uh, a good property manager that really does care and has heart and compassion and like runs things in that way, uh, that comes across to, to residents and they feel a lot different about you and them, uh, you, know, you know, you and what you offer them. Um, we're, we're looking at doing things that like having a community, um, organizer type person, um, that maybe gets a small discount in rent or something like that, that um, organizes uh, maybe a, a monthly uh, community event, something like that to make. Have you heard of apartment life? Did I hear that from yeah. your, okay. I heard it from your uh, podcast, yes. didn't I? Yeah, yes. We were just talking okay. about it. Yep. Yes. So apartment life. Yep. That's something we're, that's something we're considering. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. I was a resident assistant in the dorms in college and, and okay. I just, I'm a big believer in community. I think yeah, you know, people feel like they're part of a community. They're going to be happier, healthier. Um, they're going to feel more secure, and they're going to want to stay. And retention in this business is everything, um, unless you're like repositioning and you're trying to, you know, you're trying Get the to people turn out. the tenant base yeah. over. But gotcha. once you're stabilized, retention's everything. So doing those things, you know having amenities that work, that are clean, that are functional, all, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's just doing, I think it's doing this thing right is yeah. what it really comes down to. And, Common sense and stuff. Yeah. Doing people right. You know, That's and good. Ask, asking yourself, like, would I live here? Would I live in this, in this community? And if not, 
why and what can I do about that? That's great. That's great. Sonny, did you have a question? You had your hand raised? He, uh, he actually just sent me a question. He said, have you ever used PACE oh. financing for your projects? Um, we are working on, we, to answer your question, no, we haven't. We've, we've looked at it. I love PACE financing. Um, and basically, it, it, Sonny, you can speak to this, but m my understanding of PACE financing is it, it, you basically are getting financing for, um, to pay for things that, improve the community on a energy uh, level energy energetic yeah, yeah energy i've done level. some research on it uh, most states have a local yes. chapter uh and mm -hmm. you can go in and it's uh, uh basically electric or should say solar hot water tanks and solar yep. panels uh yep. and it's actually a private investors actually give you the money to put these uh in there is a certain goal when i was looking into it about a year and a half two years ago it has to meet a 10 percent increase in efficiency for this to be able to do uh, but mm -hmm. each state search pace energy efficient each state has their own uh, chapter that is funded by mm -hmm. local uh, investors great question so, but, yes but I have um, okay so I actually am an analyst for pace loan group a company based out of Minnesota oh, okay which we do deal in pace financing for commercial properties uh, with most developers. And to answer your question, I mean, you were on the right path, but also PACE is not what it was or what it used to be before and going forward. You know, I, I mean, maybe Tate will agree with me. Any new construction that you start now is more energy efficient compared to what it would be from codes before. And so getting an energy audit on that, like every, every VC, like any new construction right now benefits from PACE financing because we basically are there to reduce your equity and increase your IRR, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that that, that we are providing, and uh, like like I said, like the energy efficiency has become so much more clearer and so much better now that actually every project, whether you like it or not, is going to qualify for pace financing based for on lead. Those, now, um, but is yeah. is doesn't your system the pace work more for like retrofitting existing buildings, right? That, that's still available, so, no, right? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Actually, so it it is uh, basically depends on the counties, on the states, what legislation we actually passed most of them i can speak for like we've done uh, deals in minnesota we have a lot of assets in minnesota we have them all over like in wisconsin iowa uh not sorry not iowa uh, because there's no place in iowa right now but uh a lot of them for new construction like i was saying is also allowed and retroactive base is also allowed so whether okay. it's a ground up whether it's a uh, you know, you're busting in an old, tearing an old building down and just creating new, more efficient building uh, to begin with, whether it's like your HVAC, electrical, you know, plumbing, uh, even uh, roofing, insulation, everything under that comes for base financing. It qualifies as a base financing product. Okay, hey, Sonny, awesome. do you mind throwing your uh, email address in the chat? I'd like sure, to. I would. I would. I, like I was to just going to ask you that. Yeah, your website and email address. I think a lot of people are interested in that. Thank you. And thank you for your information, Sonny. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, for please do me. that. Actually, I, 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 I crucified what it was because I, I, I looked at it here in Michigan and, mm -hmm. and got some information. But thank you. That's, that's going to be yeah, great. We've got, actually, we've got, we've got a lot of deals in Michigan. Our COO used to run the Clean Green Michigan program. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, that's, I was just going to say, yes, the name of it. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, goodness so, gracious. On board with us, so we've actually been doing a lot of things in Michigan. Awesome. awesome. What if, does Oklahoma City allow it? Do they have a program there? I don't think they do. Oklahoma. So, uh, some some places in Oklahoma do have it. I am okay. not sure whether uh, it's not all of the state for sure, but it's, it's like some places we have done deals. Isn't there but, a, a website you can go to, and then it goes breaks it down by city? Because I remember checking to Georgia. Georgia has one. Do you yeah. know the like the overall? Is it a so, green uh, initiative? That's something. Every county's website should have that if they have passed phase based financing in their in their legislation before, or you know, it's pretty easy to find. But if if seriously, I'll pass my email down. I can send okay. you that cool. information. It's, I'll have thank have you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank Buck ninety six ninety six. You had a question. You had your hand raised. Go ahead, Buck. Yeah, what is the uh, 
uh, better than average return, uh, uh, Tate, uh, yeah. when you're expressing that number. Uh, yeah. I'm a newbie investor on multifamily. Uh, I'm still trying to make heads or tails out of what what is a good mm -hmm. return? Sure. So a good syndication deal, if you are considering being a passive investor in a good syndication deal, I would recommend a deal that pays somewhere between a 7 and a 9 percent preferred return on your investment on an ongoing basis throughout the, the hold time of the investment. And then I would look for somewhere around a anywhere between a 60-40 and an 80-20 split, equity split to the limited partners, uh, meaning the passive investors. So that's going to net an internal rate of return of ideally somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. Um, an internal rate of return, obviously, it, it it measures the entire return of the investment from the acquisition fee to any any um, uh, um, cash flow during the hold and any profit uh, that that is created at the end of the deal. So most of our deals are, we're projecting somewhere between a 17 and a 20% IRR. Um, that typically is about a 2X equity multiple um, on, on about a five-year hold, usually. Um, that's kind of what our deals look like. We pay either a 7% or an 8% preferred return, and we typically offer a 60-40 split or a 70-30 split to the limited partners, um, depending on the, the, basically the, depending on the deal. If it's a, if it's a really good deal, lucrative deal, everybody's going to do really, really well. Um, we're at a 60-40 split. Um, and that's typically where things come in. So, um, that's kind of what to look for. One resource that I would, just throw out there for you guys is, and I don't have any affiliation with this, but um, Joe Fairless on his website has a investor resources page that is designed specifically for kind of newbie investors considering um, passive investing, passively investing in a deal. And like, it gives you everything that you need to know, like all the terminology, all the industry standards, um, and will if you kind of digest all of that, everything that's on that page, that'll serve you well, ultimately, let me, uh, let me ask you, are you thinking of being more of an active investor like me, where you're out finding deals and finding capital and being an operator, uh, of properties, or are you thinking more along the lines of, uh, being a passive investor in a deal? No, what it is, is I've been an active investor as far as single family. Uh -huh. uh, I've sold some of my single family, liquidated and ready to go into the multifamily. I'm more, I want to okay. be more of a passive investor. I'm a mature uh, yeah. individual and I have a lot of uh, interests that I want to do other than uh, work my butt off being a landlord. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I'm headed. I'm trying to be more of a passive investor. Yes. Smart. Very, very smart. Um, I think the passive investor position in these deals is the best position. I mean, you, you get a, uh, you get paid before everybody else after debt service and you are the ma majority owner, you're, you know, you're part of the majority ownership of, of the deal. And so the, the risk is, is mitigated because through that mechanism, right. And, um, and the, the returns are, are very, very nice. I just don't want responsibility at my age. That's all. Right. I get it. <laughs> well, that's the beauty of commercial real estate or apartments in general, that two different sides. If you want to be more active and be like Tate, fine, get in there. Or you can be, you know, passive and make yep. great returns too. So that's awesome. Yep. Yep. Somebody asked, can you explain what is apartment life? Um, my understanding of what I, I, I I, I got to be honest, I probably can't explain it very well. Um, it, one of my guests meant, brought it up the other day on the, on the podcast. And it, it, it basically is a, my understanding is that it's 
it's a program designed to build community. So I think if you Google it, it, it'll describe it a lot better than I could, but it's basically in, with apartment life, I think you typically have at least one tenant or resident that either, li- you know, p- basically lives for free or doesn't pay rent um, or pays a, a, str- a heavily reduced rent. And they have, uh, you know, a laundry list of responsibilities around um, community building. And, and it's just, it's designed to, just increase quality of life and retention. It's my understanding of it. Yeah, I think they also they organize community events. From what I yes. remember from your podcast, That's they're right. like a, a property manager, but they're more at the community level where they're actually engaging with the tenants much more than a property manager. What I got. That's kind of what I got off of the uh, off of your podcast. Uh, so that that I thought that was pretty good that you could bring them in and let's say even give them a free rent, you're going to bolster your community. And again, that stickiness and that, Hey, I don't want to leave because now I know, you know, all my neighbors, right. Yes. I mean, that's the best part of it. So yeah, that's awesome. Anybody yeah. else? Any, got any other questions here? I ask away guys, seriously, I'm an open book. I'm, I'll tell you anything I, I can and um, I want to help. So. So, uh, okay, so you're encouraging me to ask a question. I'm fairly new to um, real estate and I'm still trying to find my place in the sun. Uh, Passive seems, for obvious reasons, seems easier, right? The whole active GP thing seems a little daunting. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, what what I want to do. And I did go through a boot camp recently, uh, which was very heavy on trying to be active and GP and finding deals. The only thing that I'm not, you know, really convinced about is, you know, if just going to a website and, you know, looking at, you know, OEMs and trying to run numbers was good enough to get great deals and everybody would be doing it. So the part that I'm not able to good connect point. the dots to is, you know, I know my backyard, but other than that, I don't know anything else. So how do you, you know, if you, if you, if you don't have all the time in the world, you have a job, yeah. how do you make the transition to maybe finding that first deal uh, if you want it to be active? without making too many mistakes along the way. So finding your first deal as an active GP? I mean, that seems to be more attractive, obviously, right? It's got, it's got better returns, obviously, more work, more money, more risk. Like, so it's all connected, right? You, you put well, in more so you get more out of it. Yeah, I, I, that's true. Um, except that the, you know, the LPs do, they own more of the deal. So, um, and they make a preferred return, which the GPs don't, you know, the GPs get paid only if the LPs are paid first and, and in whole. So, um, I don't think that there's a huge difference in like, obviously they're very, very different roles. And, you know, the great thing about being passive is you are, you, you send in a wire and you sit back and let the GP do the heavy lift and the property managers and, and, you know, you collect a, either a monthly or a quarterly uh, check, depending on what sponsor you're working with. I would say, um, look, deal, being an active, just it, it's, it, I don't know that I, I don't know that I'd even really recommend it with a full-time. It sounds like you, you've got a full-time job yes. um, and doing it well and doing it right. Like there's a lot of people that are doing this full time that are, that are, you know, investing everything they got right in trying to make this work. And, and I'm not saying that you, that you couldn't um, compete with them, but like, like that's who you're competing with. Mm -hmm. So, and there's a lot of competition right now. It's, you know, unless, unless you, so, but, but to answer your question, here you go, right? You find somebody that can find you off market deals that you can get under your control, either under LOI or under, uh, under a, uh, under contract. And at that point, you've got a big, big card in your deck that you can play with and you can go to somebody that uh, does what I do and say to them, Hey, I've got this deal. Uh, I think it's a good deal. I've, 
you know, I put it under contract and, and I like you to take a look at it and, and consider partnering with me on it. That is 100% the easiest way to get on a GP and, uh, to become an operator. Um, now getting to that point is like getting that kind of broker relationship going is like what everybody's trying to do. It's kind of a Holy grail sort of thing, but you may know people already that can help you with this. And, uh, if you, and if you don't know somebody directly, you may know somebody that can point you in the right direction. So, um, I don't want to discourage you from going the active route. It's just, it's just, a um, the, the barrier of entry is just a lot higher, uh, than, than, than passive. So, um, I, I don't know, hopefully that's helpful. Um, it's definitely yeah. helpful, uh, just a follow on question. So on the passive route, would you recommend, uh, essentially just networking with, you know, with, with, with sponsors and syndicators, or, or would you think that even the crowdfunding platforms that put up these deals could be a good starting place? Yeah, I guess, um, the, the crowdfunding platforms are probably a great place to start because those are going to be really well underwritten, well vetted deals. Um, if they're coming through those sources in general. So I would say um, that the trustability factor should be there with those sources. But at the same time, you know, working with somebody like, like for instance, a Joe Fairless, who again, I don't, I, he doesn't even know me by name, um, but is somebody that's, that's literally had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of investors that is going to communicate with you at very high levels and keep you well informed. Um, that might be a really great place to start, but yes, networking, 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 going to, you know, there's, there's weekly meetup groups, there's monthly meetup groups, there's places like this um, where you can get a feel for an individual sponsor. Um, obviously I'm one, I'm more than happy to spend some time with you on a call at any point. Um, but they're, they're, are very good syndicators out there and, and there are good deals right now. Um, there's a lot of overpriced deals for sure. A lot of overpriced deals, uh, but there are good deals too. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and I think welcome. also, let me follow up on that. I think nowadays it's a lot easier to vet and get more information with all the the zoom meetings and meetups now that are all virtual you can sit in your you know office and just you know see hundreds where you before we had to travel you know and book trips and hotels you know and conferences so it you know it, it sometimes it is overwhelming but definitely and you'll, you'll connect with somebody i mean the that's what we did uh, when we connected with our our um, gps that we have in our 188 units we just clicked we met in a meetup group and we just connected and liked what they were doing and just started following them and you know talking with them and and then that's what that's how it happens i mean that's it's just like anything else good question though mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome anybody else got any more questions bruce uh, you don't you don't question. have a question bruce <laughs> yes go well, ahead sir on, i'll tell you what you know first of all thank you for coming on and sharing <laughs> sharing what you're sharing it's just been uh, very fascinating just listening um, you know, I was, when you were talking about your, the thing that was bringing you down earlier, I, my first thought, what, well, what doesn't kill you makes you, makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, you know, sometimes that's part of the journey Yep. where we've just got to kind of go through those things to, you know, make sure we're on the right path. So, you know, there was a lot of things that you were saying that was, that were resonating that I was like, ah. Oh, yeah, unfortunately been there, done that, but it's part of the journey, you know, and, yes, sir, and what Jag, Jag, Jagdish was saying was, you know, it's you made some great points there too. You don't have to be the guy that's running the thing. You can be part of something by bringing something or being, bringing mm -hmm. a talent or bringing something to, to a group that is something uh, valuable to a person. So there's different people doing different things in, in a partnership and, you know, it's like any one of us have to are, are just looking to find those kind of uh, that kind of environment and those kind of people that we kind of 
click with or connect with that we can bring what we have. So, but I, you know what? I, I, I really bye, appreciate bye. Pardon me. Sorry. I'm telling my dog to be quiet. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll not, not you, Bruce. Not I'll, I'll you. Not you. I'll no, up. not you, Bruce. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ho, Ho scorns gas. Oh my God. That's good. <laughs> no, 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 but no, really. I just, I really appreciate you just brought yeah. some great, great information. And as usual, Pat brings some great value to, you know, yeah. to, to what he brings. So thanks for being here. And thank you, Pat, for inviting Tate here. Thank you, yeah, thank you so much. It. That's what I'm here for. Now, Ben, you had a question, didn't you? Hey, hey, Pat, real quick, oh, if I could. Go ahead. Ben, and Ben, you're next, bud. Um, well, so the other, to get um, back to, I hope I'm saying Jagdish's name right. Um, yeah, you said but, right. Uh, to get back to one other point to make, like the two big pieces of any deal are the deal itself and the capital, right? So you know, obviously you're getting a mortgage, you're getting the debt, but the raising the equity, raising the capital that's needed to do the deal is a huge part of getting the deal done. So another very feasible way to get on a GP quickly is to come up with enough funds that, it, that are GP worthy. And what I mean by that is Savvy money. So I'm, I'm basically giving you guys a little bit of kind of inside scoop here, but uh, savvy people with about a half million dollars will go to a sponsor and say, I've got a half million dollars that, it, you know, and it's either your money or your money and somebody else's money or somebody else's money, right? Like it doesn't matter, but you go to a sponsor with a half million bucks and say, I want to be on your GP. I've got a half million dollars uh, in my network to bring to, to the table, or I've got a million dollars, or I've got $1.5 million. The, a sponsor it is often going to be interested in working with you at that level. And we've done it. We've had people with, with uh, it's usually around a million um, that they're either... Um, you know, they're either 1030, they've got some money that uh, don't take 1031 out of it. It's a mess, but, um, but they've got money from other deals that they're working with on of their own, or they've just got a good network and they've got a lot of credibility. And so they've got the ability to go out and raise capital. Um, you know, we typically are, we, we typically designate about 30% of our GPs or 30% of our GP is designated for capital raising, right? So you got to be careful with SEC regulations and and how and and how you kind of structure this and talk about it and do it. But it, that's a big chunk of a GP, um, and you know some sponsors will even offer more than that. We 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 kind of cap it right about 30 percent, depending on the deal. But just another avenue there to get involved. Understood. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Ben, you're next. <laughs> Sorry for the wait, dude. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Uh, so this is a question, uh, maybe a technical question. Uh, as a, just trying to starting to be a syndicator now with kind of smaller deals. And what I'm trying to understand is uh, uh, it's technicality. Yeah. But like, is the loan and the finance, is that the guarantee, uh, the, the only guarantee on the, usually on the finance is uh, GPs? Or do you also have the LP? Like, because I bought the first multifamily kind of big, but I, 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 did, I do it without finance. The next one is going to be way bigger. So it has to be finance and you know, yep. it's real estate. So well, you, should, you should be using financing for everything these days. It's so freaking cheap. And so, so, you know, leverage your cash and leverage your equity, leverage other people's equity against really cheap money. So that's number one. Um, to, okay. So sponsors, okay. Lenders that are issuing the debt typically require any party that's over 20% ownership of the entire deal to sign on the loan. So often that is no one like we've got a team of four and we sometimes will bring in a capital raiser. And so we split, 
you know, we're splitting the GP up um, and the LPs are often not a full 20% either. So at that point, then we're looking at, okay, we just need our sponsor to sign on the loan. And usually that's good enough uh, for the lender. Right. Um, so, yeah. And, and a lot of times too, it just kind of depends on what kind of loan you're using, whether it's actually recourse or non-recourse. Um, that's a thing too. So, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these loan programs are non-recourse, so it doesn't really even, it's not really even material, uh, who's signing on it, you know, if that makes sense, um, at the end of the day. So, so basically I, I did hear what you said from, uh, when I tried to find like, I started, I started my first time like thinking I, I spoke to the bank, I spoke to some lenders and they all said like, if someone has less than 20%, we don't really need him on as a guarantee. Yeah. But the question, if no one has more than 20, yeah. so, as you said, it's the sponsor. So yeah. So just somebody from the group needs to step up and sign the loan is the bottom line. And the bank wants them to be worth a certain amount or they want the group to be worth a certain amount. They want the group to have a certain amount of liquidity and they want the group to have the resume. So when I say the group, if that one member of your team isn't strong enough on, on his or her own, then you might need to bring in two, three, four members of the group to get the loan. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Uh, I'm asking it because I'm, uh, so I bought, a property and I want to refinance it because uh, right now it was not as stable. So my idea was to, it's a 10 unit and I bought it. And now when I'm stabling it, it's refinancing it. And then uh, in this case, I'm trying to understand who should I put as a guarantor uh, because all of the investors, all the LPs, they, they have no experience except small experience. And then me and the other GP, we have experience. We have, I have over eight deals. He has around uh, 20 deals, you know, but um, so from what I understand, we can just put ourselves. Um, Do you have the net worth and liquidity that's required between the two of you? For, for how much? That's a question. Uh, how much is your, how much is the acquisition? So, so we bought it for, it's uh, 550 and uh, it's, it's worth around, uh, 700. It's, it's a small, it's not a big family. Okay. So um, if, so if you're going to, if you're going to get a commercial loan on it, you need to have a net worth of, uh, or somebody, whoever you have to have a common, a combined net worth of $550,000. And you, you're going to have to have liquidity of about $55,000, which is 10%. That's the, that's the, that's like the industry standard of what lenders want to see. They want to see net worth that's that's equal to the, the the cost of the acquisition not the not what it's worth but what it's what it's costing to buy and they want to see 10 percent in liquidity uh of, of that so you yeah so you need to show if, if the two of you are going to be the only two on the loan you need to show them all those things yourself yeah okay so for, for that answer i mean for this deal it sounds fine but now the next deal when i buy a five million dollar building Kind of makes it a bit more difficult. That's when you that's when you partner up, man. Mm -hmm. Team sport. That's why, yeah, exactly. That it's a team sport. Yep. Yeah. You so you I mean start working on that partner now. Find somebody that's worth 10 million, 20 million bucks. Like they're out there. They really, really are. And the thing is you got to qualify yourself as somebody that can help them grow their wealth. Right? That's your job is to put that credibility kit together and and Put your put your knowledge together, and so that you can speak the language and 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 be proficient at helping people feel confident in your ability to to do a good job at this. Awesome! Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate it. Man, pleasure. A lot, of, a lot of nuggets, a lot of gold nuggets here. Goodness gracious! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here because Tate does have another uh, meeting. We went. I've over. got another. I've got. If, if anybody has any other questions, I've got another few minutes. Uh, I've I've got five minutes or so. So, but otherwise, I really enjoyed this. It was really fun. Well, thank you. I think everybody enjoyed it as well, and we appreciate it. Anybody got any other questions? He's he's volunteered to stay. So, come with your questions.
<laughs> well, that's all Alrighty. right. If you don't have any other questions, I, I guess I'll just, I'll just kind of leave you with this. Like, um, having, I'll leave you with one other nugget. Okay. To me, there is nothing that replaces something like a vision board, whether it's an actual vision board or a journal or a declaration or something that creates the life that you're living into on paper, visually, there, there's nothing more powerful than that. So figure out what it is that looks, what does a level 10 look like for Paul Stanowski or for Bruce Abramson or Ben or Lauren or Marty or Jagdish or Sam? What, is, what does a level 10 life look like for you in all those parts of your life? Like, you know, professionally, financially, physically, uh, relationships, recreationally, those, think about all those parts of your life and what you want to see happen in, in those lives in, in, in those parts of your life. And you know, I think, I don't know if it's Tony Robbins or somebody that said, um, we grossly overestimate what we can achieve in one year, but we grossly underestimate what we can achieve in five years. Give yourself a three to five year plan. Like I'm in the middle of a three year sprint to like two to 3000 doors and I'm not going to stop till we get there. And then once we're there, I'll have passive cash flow. I'll have, you know, net worth. I'll have all the things that I'm working towards now that are going to allow me to have the, the, the time freedom and the geographic freedom and everything else to do what I really, really, really want to do, which is help more people do this and do more deals. Um, so I'll eventually I'll be a, a really high level coach that I'll, I'll, you know, I'll charge people like 25 grand a year to coach with me or something like that. And, and basically coach millionaires and multimillionaires and, and help them get to the next level. Um, I have, I have a coach that I pay that exact amount right now. Um, it's a lot of money even for me and, or, I mean, it's a lot of money. Right. And, and it's one of those investments that I know a hundred percent is not only going to pay off, but is already paid off. I'm about seven months into coaching with, with my current coach. And uh, it's been massive, massive, massive year for us. So um, the, all that said, guys, like reach out to me anytime, please. Um, yeah, I was going to give your contact information if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll put my phone number in the chat here. Um, Thank you. And invest with Greenlight is our uh, is our website. Um, so you can you can check us out there. You can reach me there. You can schedule a meeting with me there. I've got a Calendly link. Um, let me put my Calendly link in the chat too. Thank you very much. Um, I love, seriously, I love when people reach out to me from these things. Um, you know, I like brainstorming with people. I like problem solving. And, and uh, so it's, I, 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 I'm here and I'm here to help and, you know, here to, here to rock and roll with you guys. There's my um, Calendly link. Well, thank you very much. You over exceeded expectations, <laughs> which listening to your podcast, I knew you would. And thank you very much. I'm very grateful uh, for the time you shared with us. Uh, and thank you for the, all the knowledge. Uh, I know I'll be following up with you here because uh, this has just been life changing uh, and, and stuff that you've done. And thank you very much for sharing. Thank you very much for spending your evening with us and, uh, Thank you very much, everybody that attended. And after this, uh, I'll send an email out with a recording of this. So it'll give me a couple days to get it done. Um, awesome. Tate, I'll get you a copy unedited as well as edited. Uh, cool. And we'll go from there. And thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Uh, then Our next one will not be in two weeks. It'll be September 1st. We had a scheduling change. But I'll get an email out to you there as well. But again, thank you very much, Tate. Uh, appreciate it very much. Very grateful for what you've given my group. Thank you. You. and everybody thank you and have a great evening uh oh one last thing um to save the chat if you want to put your stuff in the chat uh open up the chat box and on where you s s click in to talk to people there too there's a piece of paper a smiley face and those three little dots click on the three little dots and then you say you click on save chat 
And then once you save the chat, it'll say uh, save to folder. Click on that, okay? And then you see where it goes on your computer and then you just rename it and then save it down to that. So if everybody wants to put their information into chat, go ahead and do that. And I, I won't close the meeting up right away. No, I know uh, Tate's got to leave, but I'll leave it open for a few so you guys can do that. Um, and you guys have the chat and then look for the email with a recording. And again, thank you very much, Tate. Very, very informational. And man, I got a lot of nuggets. I got a, a bunch of notes, a cool. bunch of notes. Cool. Thank you. I, it was my pleasure. I really loved it. All right. Really Thank you, guys. It. Everybody have a great evening and have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon, guys.